All right, so we are going to find out uh, while we study that JavaScript is very, very ugly in some cases because it's very, very old. And when you have something very old that you cannot update, you will have to just patch it. This means that, for example, there are so many websites that use JavaScript, but some of them, they use a very old version. And we cannot just update it, like JavaScript 100%, just update it to something completely different and super modern and whatever, because so many websites of the internet will break. And that is something that we don't want to do. So uh, what Vanilla JavaScript stands for is that thing the JavaScript that is provided to you by the browser, all the patches and all the ugly stuff, that is the vanilla JavaScript that people talk about. Some people do not use vanilla JavaScript. Some of them, they learn stuff like CoffeeScript, which is like sexy JavaScript. Uh, some of them learn how to make it super more modern. Some of them uh, use stuff that compiles the JavaScript. So for example, they write very modern unsupported JavaScript, and then they execute this inside of a compiler. Don't worry about these stupid terms. They just put it, they just put the code inside of a box. You can imagine that. And the box spits out compatible JavaScript to all the browsers. So basically you write very sexy JavaScript and then you get compatible ugly as JavaScript. Okay, and that is sometimes a problem because it is very hard to find talent in JavaScript. Many people know libraries, many people know frameworks. Like I said in the previous video, framework and library, they just mean uh, makeup, okay, of JavaScript, something a little bit prettier than the normal JavaScript. That makes it easy to learn, but they actually don't know the vanilla JavaScript, the hardcore uh, raw JavaScript. And this is why I think it's good for you as a beginner to do everything vanilla until you feel comfortable and then you will move somewhere else. Uh, why is that? That is because, like I said, there is no talent in JavaScript. Almost it's hard to find talent in true JavaScript. It's very easy to find people that know React, people that know jQuery, people that know this library, people that are experts on some framework. But these people, what they do is that they are experts on a framework. They are not experts on the field. So, for example, if we were talking about Photoshop, okay, let's say Photoshop, and I'm going to try to make this analogy here. If, the, if we were talking about Photoshop, that would be the equivalent of somebody being very good at Photoshop, the software, but being very shit at taking photos. Kind of. So they can use the tool, but they don't know the, the essence. No, sorry, not taking photos. Somebody very good at Photoshop, but almost with no theory of color, no theory of composition, not knowing what a good image is, not understanding what the colors are, not understanding the quality of the image. That's a better analogy. So that is basically what happens, what happens on the JavaScript board, and is that there is no talent for vanilla JS. And that's why I want you to learn it. There is this website, it's vanillajs.com, that is a parody website. It's not a true website because it says vanilla is a fast JavaScript framework. It's used by Facebook, Google, YouTube, Yahoo, Wikipedia, all the big names. But it's actually true because it's, Java, it's just JavaScript. That's why everybody has to use it. And they'd say here, do you want to try vanilla JS? Awesome. Choose exactly what you need. So you can customize your vanilla JS. What is do you want? I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this, I want this, I want everything. Let's say I want everything. And the complete size is zero bytes. That's it. Now, this is just a funny website because many people make their own library and they want them to download, they want you to download it and stuff. So I will show you one example of how it looks like. Don't get scared yet, but I know you know, you, you know HTML, right? So you know what an ID is. So for example, if I want to get an ID, on JavaScript, like for example, if I want to go to HTML file and I want to grab one ID using JavaScript, I will have to use this. Okay. But if I use something like Dojo, I will have to use this. If I use prototype.js, I will use this. If I use jQuery, I will use this. If I use Yahoo UI, I will do this. Mode tools, I will do this. And all of them, all of them, 
are a makeup for the same line, which is this one, all right? So this is why I'm not teaching you jQuery JS or Dojo, because I don't wanna teach you the makeup. I want to teach you the actual thing. So all of these fuckers, all of them, all of them translate to this one. And as you can see, of course, normal JavaScript is fucking fast. This thing can do 12 million operations per second. That is fucking good, okay? So yeah, that's it. That is vanilla JavaScript and that is why we have to learn it. If you become a very good vanilla JavaScript developer and you understand what the language is about and you understand vanilla JavaScript, you will have almost no problems if you wanna jump from vanilla JavaScript to something like React. If you won't have no, you will have no problems if you wanna jump from vanilla JavaScript to making stuff and video games using, I don't know, ImpactJS or Phaser. Uh, you will understand m almost any library that you come across. If you wanna do some the, the 3D stuff that we saw that is made with 3JS, so you can just do that. You can just go right, right into that because you will know the language where everything on the web is based on. And that is the key point of this. If you learn vanilla JavaScript, you will learn the language that everything on the web is based on. It's not a beautiful language. It's not the most elegant one. It has many what the fuck things. We will see, we will see them later. But yes, that's it. It's just everything on the web, everything that you ever seen on the web has it and has been built on that. So it's kind of powerful, yeah? That's it, I think, for this introduction of JavaScript. If you are not convinced that you should learn JavaScript, then I'm sorry, I'm not a good salesman of JavaScript. Uh, if you are, then jump right in because on the next one, we are going to start talking about how does the fuck can I write JavaScript? Where can I put it? See you on the next one. Bye-bye.